Uh, good afternoon. My name is Tom Hyde, team leader for e-commerce at Chow UK. Thank you for attending today. I'm going to be talking about recommendation marketing, uh, more specifically how retailers can make use of user-generated content to drive their sales. It's nice to see a good turnout, plenty of familiar faces, so thank you for attending. I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Alternatively, as a company, we do have a stand um, at the exhibition, so please feel free to approach us at any time throughout the show. Before I talk about the agenda for today's presentation, I'd like to show you a couple of quotes I found while researching this subject. They all have a very common theme, talking about how users trust users. I think the headline quote, and something that's going to be very common throughout the presentation is, 91% say consumer content is the number one aid to making buying decisions. This was a quote from the JC Williams Group, and I think sums up just how important user-generated content is. So looking at the agenda, I'm going to start by giving you a brief overview of some of the characteristics of online selling. I'm not going to spend too long on this section, as I'm sure everyone in the room is quite well versed in how important online sales are in today's market. Then I'm going to talk about how trust and information equals conversion. I'm going to go into some specifics about how that is gained. Then I'm going to move on to the bulk of the presentation, which is talking about making use of customer opinions. I'm going to show you some examples of how it's currently done on the internet, some good, some bad examples. And hopefully you can take some tips away on how you can improve your site or potentially any websites that you run. Finally, if I have time, I'd like to finish with a bit of information about Chow, the price comparison site I work for. And like I said, answer any questions that you may have. So if we move on to the online selling, if we look at some of the benefits, again, very, very straightforward. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of some of the, the benefits, ease of use, availability, variety. These are all very self-explanatory. When I'm talking about lower price, in today's credit crunch market, users are looking for the best deal, the lowest price. Sites like price comparison sites are a useful aid in the buying process. Finally, 24-7, comfort, time-saving. This is all scheduling for maybe the user that can't liaise in the shops, have time to visit the online store, uh, sorry, the offline store. So it's, it's very much a case of online selling is for the consumer who doesn't have time. Uh, it's a one-stop shop for, for thousands of products. I think as a retailer, it's important to understand some of the subtle differences in the buying process between offline and online, and how online compensates for this. If we look at offline specifically, you've obviously got a real person in the shop, the ability to demonstrate the product to the consumer. They find it easier to sell because they can interact, they can spot buying signals. They can also disperse doubt. They can offer tailored incentives for the user to purchase the goods and really liaise on a one-to-one on -one -one basis. How does offline overcome this? Well, as we mentioned earlier, the amount of sources. Thousands of online stores, thousands of products gives a consumer more choice. They obviously have the ability to look at pictures, videos, industry demos, really empower the user with as much information before purchasing as possible. There's obviously no pressure. I'm sure everyone in the room has felt pressured at some point in an offline store to buy an item of clothing, a television. Offline, uh, online, sorry, is very, very relaxed. People can spend at their own leisure buying the products, searching the products, reading reviews about user opinions, professional test reports. A common theme throughout this presentation is going to be talking about how user reviews are becoming more and more important compared to maybe uh, the online, um, the seller who is looking to sell you the product in the shop obviously has an incentive to sell it to you, whereas the user opinion is much more um, unbiased, maybe Joe blogs in the street, using the product on a day-to-day -day basis, much more worthwhile for the potential customer. I think it's also important to highlight the conflicts in the buying process. This is the last slide on online selling and really shows how conflict can be overcome. I'm gonna use a television as an example so you can see Spending money. Am I sure that I'm willing to pay all this money for a television? That is obtained by trust. 
So once you get the trust from the user, they've overcome the actual outlay of the money. The second bit is product choice. Is this TV the right one for me? Is it the right spec? Is it the right model? Is it the right color? That all comes from information. And finally, the best deal. Am I, as a consumer, getting the best deal for this television, all things considered? And that is a combination of trust and information. Talking about that, if we look at it specifically, I'd like to start this section by showing you a Mediascope Europe survey. They basically spoke to a thousand online customers and spoke to them about, of the people that were purchasing, did they do any research online before purchasing the goods? As you can see, the European average is around 40%, with UK le users leading the way. I think this shows that the UK is becoming very savvy about user reviews, how important they are becoming in today's market. If we look in a little bit more granularity on these results, the following slide shows the information that these active shoppers were using to research before purchasing. As you can see, the three that I've highlighted, customer website reviews and expert website reviews. Very high amount of people were using these sites to research goods, information before purchasing. The other one I've highlighted is also websites of well-known brands. And it's to show the very little difference between customer review websites, expert reviews, and well-known brands. In the past, I think it's fair to say people would visit the, the actual manufacturer site to get information on the product. Now, it appears they're becoming much more interested in actually reading reviews from Joe Bloggs on the street who's maybe got the product, bought the product, the positive and negative experiences they've had with the product. Now, a little bit more detail about some of the important factors in the purchasing decision. At Chow, we do a yearly survey where we speak to our users about what they find useful in sites to build trust, where they look for information. The three main points that we pulled out from the survey this year were users look for good content, no errors, and a simple design. Sites with flash banners, lots of nice graphics may look good, but it's actually the simple professionalism of sites that build trust with the user. In terms of information, they're looking for product ratings, merchant ratings, where shall I buy, what shall I buy? And as a retailer, it's your, your duty to empower your user with as much information and to obviously try and build trust to gain that conversion. Also, I've touched upon seals of trust. As you can see, I've shown some examples of price comparison sites and their seals of trust. This is a very good way of aligning your brand with maybe a well-known online store, recommended reseller, review sites. Any way of building trust is, is going to be advantageous in the buying decision. I'd like to take a step back and show you three more quotes I found again that basically reiterate the users trust users. I think a very nice quote from the New York Times, basically stating that over 70% list word of mouth as the key influencer to meet purchasing decisions. Again, showing the importance of how users trust users and the importance it plays in today's purchasing decisions. Why is this all important, you may be asking? Well, as you can see from the slide, I've highlighted the re UK retail e-commerce sales as predicted by Verdict Research from 2002 down to 2012. Now, Obviously, we expect this to take a hit with the credit crunch, but you can see the graph is only going in one way. So it's very important as retailers, you understand how important online selling is and really to optimize your, your current campaign and how you sell online. So moving on to the third, third section, I'm going to talk about how you can actually make use of customer opinions. So what am I talking about when I talk about opinions and reviews? You may have seen all of these words banding around the internet, and I think it's important to understand the platforms that facilitate these user-generated content, recommendation marketing, reputation management. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to word of mouth marketing. And that is the key on this slide, it's word of mouth. It's what are your users saying about the products that they're looking to buy? What are they saying about your company? 